This year, John Deere launched a new transmission for its 7R and 8R tractors. It's called the E23, and that's because it's got 23 shifts and a complete power shift box. It replaces the old semi power shift box and sits in alongside the only other option, which is Deere's own Auto Power CVT. So we've got a uh, CVT box tractor behind me and the new 310R with the, uh, the E23 box. We're going to see uh, how the two compare. Outside of the cab, the big change is probably under the bonnet and it's the cooling pack, which has kind of returned to conventional form with the, the radiators up front and they form a bit of a box as the air is dragged through by the fan. Whereas on the old one, all the auxiliary drives are up front and the, ra the radiators are right at the back. After Deer spending the last few years and a fair chunk of their advertising budget shouting about the, the benefits of a one fluid system, step round the side and you'll see the blue filler cap and white discharge, telltale signs of our blue. The other result of all that emissions related nonsense is the big dustbin at the bottom of the stack, which is fine visibility wise, it doesn't cause too many issues. But getting round to your star fire system or to clean your window is altogether a bit more troublesome. Here on the, on the cab on the uh, older CVT tractor, things are a little bit more dated. It's got the smaller colour touchscreen, which is easy enough to use and uh, can show you uh, any of the GPS or whatever you require. But the, the armrest is a lot more cluttered with all these A, B, C, D buttons that are supposed to, you're supposed to program for various functions, which in reality never ends up happening. You'll see a big difference in the new tractor. So the new, new gearbox has a gate, just like uh, the old power shift. So we come out of uh, park, forward, and into the forward slot, and the tractor takes off automatically. There is, however, no left-hand power shuttle on this. It is an option. We don't really like having it in the gate. Be, it's not quite as easy to use. Anyway, we set the tractor moving, use the foot, foot throttle initially, We're in full auto mode at the moment. So we get lined up for the run, engage the steering, and then in a second, drop the cultivator in with full beans. And put the hand throttle on. And in full auto mode, the tractor will drive itself. Not only does it steer itself, of course, but it, uh, it will work the transmission and engine to, to keep minimum fuel consumption but keep at your set speed which I've set here on the uh, cruise control buttons one and two and to adjust that you just simply scroll the thumb wheel and the, the uh, digits up here increase to show your target speed and above that your actual speed now you'll see that um, we're not actually running the normal tractor home page here, which would uh, normally look like this. We're actually staying on the transmission settings page because although full auto is brilliant and it's very smooth shifting, when you get to a really tough bit, like most auto functions or most power shift tractors, it can't preempt the fact that you're getting to a tram line or to a heavier bit of the field. So we tend to have to switch into manual mode and then drop down the gears manually so that uh, we can lift out and then select full auto once again once we get a lift out. So what do we make of it? Well, compared to the auto power, the E23 is never going to be as smooth, but for a power shift it is smooth, there's no doubt about that. The thing we did find though is that the auto shifts just aren't quick enough, so when there's a tough spot uh, there was a clay cap at the bottom of this field and um, you kind of got to be on the ball and switch it to manual so that you can sort of plough through that area. But if you're just not a fan of CVT boxes, at least John Deere has a really good power shift to offer now. It is three and a half grand cheaper than the auto power box, so I suppose a few people might be tempted.